Yeah, y'all, we are back at it again with some quest updates. And just for context, in the past two hours, two weeks alone, I've been putting in over 20 hours of wireless PC use. So I feel like I can definitely speak on some of the stuff that I've been liking, what I haven't been liking, and some of the stuff you can do to maybe help yourself with that. If you haven't checked it out already, check out one of the previous videos showing you how to set up a dedicated router for your Quest setup. That way you're not just piggybacking off of your existing Wi-Fi, which trust me, this is gonna be a much better experience and you can get rid of the cable when using Oculus Link. The steps that I went over in the original video were for the official method of connecting your Quest to your PC wirelessly, and that is Oculus or Meta Airlink, but that's the official way. And there are just a few quirks. One of the big annoyances for like just everyday use is that if you go a day without using Airlink, you have to go in to the Oculus app on your PC, go to the settings, beta tab, and enable Airlink there. It will automatically turn off if it's not in use for 24 hours. You're gonna have to do this like every single fucking time unless you play every day, which if you do, I mean, you know, props to you, but that's not gonna be the majority of people. It's just a small annoyance. You just, there's just too many little steps to get it to connect, which will be proven by the other solution, which is a third party way of connecting. And this has been out for a while, but I never really thought about it all that much. I just saw the official one come out and that's when I went all in. Before then I was using a goddamn cable like a caveman. What is this third party solution you might be asking? And well, it is called virtual desktop. And I think the biggest point of contention for people giving this a shot is that, well, one, it's not built into the software, but two, it's not free. Airlink is completely free. Virtual desktop is not. You have to pay for it. It's 20 bucks my mind super worth it if you're having any sort of issue with airlink which i was i was running into something kind of minor within a 30 minute or 45 minute session i would have a handful of times where i would be playing everything's nice and smooth but i would get this weird choppiness just for like one two seconds maybe but it would be enough to completely fuck me up because I play a lot of Beat Saber. This is what I really use this for. I love playing Beat Saber. That completely ruins any personal best runs that you're having. It is super obnoxious. I had it happen way too many times. I was having a good run and it just fucked me up. And I got to the point where I thought maybe it was my router and I considered buying an even higher end router to replace it just to see if that was better. But then I remembered that, hey, virtual desktop's a thing. Let me give it a shot and lo and behold, it like basically never happens. Now, now within a 45 minute, an hour session, I might get two or three kind of like that moments, but it's never nearly as bad. It's way, way more consistent and you have so many more options, but we're going to go over some of the things that I really like about it other than, you know, having an alternative. Once you purchase virtual desktop on your quest, you also need to install something on your PC just because again, it is not natively built into the Oculus app at all. You have to go to vrdesktop.net and of course I'm going to leave the links down below and download the streamer app. I've been using this on Windows. So you just download that, save it, and we will go from there. Of course, I whined about Airlink and having to manually initiate it. And this virtual desktop, you can just have it start with Windows. Who would have thunk it? You don't have to manually enable this every single time you play. I know I am nitpicking about this, but holy shit, when you play a lot, it's just so annoying to have to go in and toggle that on every time. So it just makes so much sense. And there's a lot of stuff that you can do in virtual desktop. Well. Before we get into all that, you do initiate it a little bit differently just because I said this isn't built into the system, so you have to do it a little bit differently. Once you get the streamer app installed, you will have to install the application on request if you haven't already, launch it from there, and it's usually pretty good about pairing automatically. And after that, it just pairs within a few seconds. 
It's nice, you'll see your desktop here shortly. It scales everything super nice. I think the desktop experience itself is considerably better than it was with the native Oculus setup. I don't tend to do any desktop stuff when I'm on the Quest, but if you do anything like that, give it a shot. I mean, I think it might be worth it just for that. But for me, even if you don't care about all the little settings, all the little niceties that they build in, I would have probably bought this just for the fact that I don't have to start it every fucking time. But the thing that I really wanted was to be able to force 120 hertz on the Quest. Of course, that's going to chew up your battery, but it's so nice that you can do that. That you can tell it what refresh rate you want to hit, and you might have to adjust some of the graphical settings. Like for me, even though I'm running a 6800 XT, I had to set it the graphics quality below that so that I could hit that 120 mark. You can adjust what, you know, refresh what you're trying to hit, but I wanted the most smooth experience that I could possibly have. And wow, it's just so much better. If you're not having any problems with AirLink, then by all means, keep on using it. Don't spend any extra money. But what I would do is even if you're in that camp, download, virtual desktop. I think you can return it within a couple hour window of using it. So just give it a shot just to see, see what's what, you know, give it a shot. Of course, I'm not, you know, affiliated with virtual desktop in any capacity. But one thing that I will say is that their support is super nice. They have a very active discord. If you have a problem, or, you know, if you want to try some stuff out, occasionally they'll drop some beta tests. It's just nice having a community around this with people that actually seem to care a lot. If you have any questions, of course, leave it down below and I'll do my best to get on that. I still love VR and it's so nice that I can still say that I am excited to see where it's heading. I never thought that they would come back in 2016 that we would have standalone units that would be tracking so well. I was adamant that nothing that didn't have IR trackers was ever going to perform this good, but God damn it. Uh, this thing is such a good value, even though I don't really like the company behind it. Valve, do something about this. I would much rather use some of your stuff, but it's just, you can't argue with the value of this. Anyway, that's it for me, y'all. Have a good day. See ya.